Hello, this is Dr. Clint Sexton, and today I want to talk about functional bowel disorders. The ones we're going to talk about today are SIBO, IBS, and leaky gut. So let's start with leaky gut. Sounds kind of terrible, doesn't it? When we're talking about leaky gut, we're referring to your small intestine. Your small intestine is where you absorb all your nutrients, the nutrients from your food and the nutrients from any supplements you might be taking. So in this area of the gut, what can happen is you can get a breakdown of the cells that provide a barrier between the contents of the small intestine and the rest of the body. So when the gut becomes leaky, you get a breakdown of these cells and we start getting food particles or bacteria or yeast making their way into the interior part of the body. And this triggers inflammatory responses. Uh, the immune system gets involved. This can put stress on the liver. The whole point is this can lead to lots of other health issues. So when we're talking about a leaky gut, we're talking about the small intestine, which is where you absorb your nutrients. The next condition I want to briefly talk about is SIBO. So SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Notice we're back in the small intestine again. So what's happening here is that you're having too many bacteria that have migrated upward from the large intestine. They found their way into the small intestine and they're staying there. They like it there. They like it there because that's where there's a lot of food. Now remember, the small intestine is where you absorb your nutrients. The, the bacteria should not be there because then they're competing with you for the nutrients that we're talking about. Things like your vitamins, your minerals, your proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Bacteria should not be there. They should be further downstream in the large intestine. So what happens is, if, if you have SIBO, you're eating food, you're taking nutrients, and these bacteria are getting access to it at the same time you are. So they thrive, they love it there, they would like to stay there, but we don't want them there for your health. They need to be further downstream, they need to stay confined to the large intestine. You, you know, with your body, you should be absorbing the nutrients, and what would remain that your body would not absorb would be fiber. That should pass down into the large intestine, and that's what the bacteria should be primarily feeding on. Notice those both involve the small intestine. The third is IBS. So IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. I think the name is kind of interesting that we didn't come up with something a little more uh, scientific or medical, but it's just an irritable bowel. So it's an unhappy, frustrated uh, a bowel that we're dealing with. And so it's a combination of things. We have issues with gas and bloating. We can have loose stool. We can have constipation. So we're talking about some different variables here. And one of the main ones is we're talking about motility, meaning how the contents of the bowel are moving through the digestive tract. There's lots of different, different things that can contribute to this. We see hormones playing a role with this. We see neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine really being involved uh, with condition, condition uh, of IBS. And so again, it's another functional bowel disorder. These are all functional disorders. And when we're talking about the digestive tract, we need to get all these things working again the way that they should because the, the, the root, the heart of health really begins with digestion. These conditions are not managed well with medications. For example, uh, leaky gut really isn't even recognized as a condition in the medical field. If you're talking about uh, SIBO, the, condi the condition is usually treated with antibiotics. But the problem is, is that the problem tends to recur because you take antibiotics, it kills the bacteria in the small intestine, but also kills the bacteria in the large intestine. And we never got to the reason why all those bacteria were able to establish themselves up in that small intestine. And then when we're talking about IBS, some medications are used for this with, with mixed results, but again, it's a functional disorder that usually involves more than one system. Again, hormones are really involved in this much of the time, neurotransmitters as well as dietary factors. So if you'd like a little more on this, uh, check out the blog, but I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for listening.